All right, welcome to episode two of my tutorials. Today we're going to talk about conditional statements. If you're familiar with computer science, then you know a bit about uh, if statements and other conditional statements like that. This is an example of an if statement. Basically, what an if statement does is it checks for a condition. If the condition is true, it does something. And then if it's not true, it doesn't do that. So here's an example of an if statement in Java. Um, here you have an integer value for this variable. This is the uh, condition. If that is less than or equal to that, it does one thing. It's actually an if else statement because if it's not true, it does something else. Um, in Desmos, you can only really do if statements. Uh, you can't write else, but if statements are still pretty powerful and you can do a lot with that. So here's an example of an if statement. This is draw a dot at one one. And using restrictions, we can say if a is equal to one, draw the dot. And we can turn the slider into a switch. So instead of uh, being like negative 10 to 10, we can make it 0, 1, step 1, bam, it's a switch. So switches have two states, off and on. And this is very useful. So if A is equal to 1, it draws it. If not, it doesn't. And that's the basic if statement. Um, you can use equal sign. You can use inequalities. So if A is greater than 1, then you can make it negative 10 to 10. And so you can use an inequality for your statement. See, once it's greater than one, it'll draw it. The other thing you can do is logic gates. So here are some examples of logic gates. Um, the only ones it can actually handle are AND gates, OR gates, and exclusive OR gates. So and the way an AND gate works is you have two inputs, A and B, and you have an output. Um, if both A and B are on, it gives you an output. If one or the other or neither are on, it doesn't output anything. An OR gate's different. An OR gate only looks for if A or B are on, right? Or both. So if none of them are on, nothing comes out. If one is on and the other's off, or the other way around, or both are on, it'll give you an output. And then exclusive OR is uh, a little different to an OR gate. Um, if both are off, nothing happens. If both are on, nothing happens. It looks to make sure only one or the other is on. So let's go to Desmos to show you how it's done. So let's add some sliders, A1 and B1. And so basically, let's put these labels. Um, if there is a comma between your two restrictions, it becomes an OR gate. So let's just make these two into switches. So 0, 1, 1. This is 0, 1, step 1. OK, so now we have two switches. Let's make them both off. If one of them is on, it's going to put this point. Let's actually turn this on. So yeah, if one of them or the other or both are on, that shows up. This is the AND gate. If one of the other is on, it won't actually show up. You require both to be on or both of the conditions to be met in order for the dot to appear. So this is actually really useful, not just for um, switches and these conditional statements, but anytime you want a restriction where one or the other has to be true, just put a comma between it. If you want to put two different restrictions on a function, but they both have to be true at the same time, you make them into two separate things. And we actually use this a lot for um, mainly actually drawing, not really for animations or anything. Next one is the exclusive or statement, and we're going to say um three comma two we're going to put a point there let's label it uh the exclusive or statement here we have the restriction we have to make it so that a has to equal one and b is equal to zero or b is equal to one and a is equal to zero so the way we can do this is a1 plus b1 is equal to one so the sum of them has to be one so it has to be zero plus one or one plus zero. And that's the only way the exclusive or if they're both on, then no longer equals to one, equals to two. Um, exclusive or statements are a bit more difficult to put in restrictions. They're definitely a lot more limited, but all you have to do is make sure that uh, the sum of both of these is one, or let's say you have three switches. Um, no, bad example, never mind. Basically, because it's the sum of them, and it's equal to 1, it has to be 0 and 1 or 1 and 0. Because if both are on, it equals to 2. 
and that's not one. And if neither of them are on, both of them are zero, that's not one, so it doesn't show up. The thing about conditional statements is here we're using points. You don't actually need to use points. You can put an entire function. So let's say you have y is equal to 3x plus 1, right? Just simply put the restriction in a1 is equal to 1, and now it'll only show up if a1 is equal to 1. So this can be for any type of function. You can put another restriction. So let's say um, so long as x is less than or equal to, um, let's say, negative 1, and then it's less than or equal to 5. So x is equal to 5. Yep, OK. So if this is your restriction on the line itself, and then this is your if statement, if a1 is equal to 1. What makes it an if statement is the fact that there's a variable here. Because this is just a regular restriction. This is an if statement because it can change. And there you go. Yeah, so if statements are pretty powerful. Once you get conditions going, you can do like a lot in Desmos. Um, because from there, you could just take regular code. And then you can just start transferring it over. So yeah, that's if statements.